Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you watch this video. Um Taban Hakim, your teacher, and um, I welcome you to this lesson of projectile motion. In the case you're new to our lesson is please you can go and uh, find all the content, all the videos, all the work and um, by following that website, the, the prompts on that website, just look for physics 1, senior 5 or senior 6 and uh, you'll get us there. So, and um, by the way, try to like and share our content on YouTube and on Facebook. In case of anything, you can always call me on those numbers there. And uh, you can also WhatsApp me using that M10 line. So, <clears throat> Projectile motion, what is it all about? Before we go any further, we need to remind ourselves that uh, in this lesson we shall be using trigonometrical ratios of sine, cosine, and tangent. We shall be applying what we learned sometime back, and that is uh, resultant velocity. That is the resultant of vector quantities. And of course, their components. In the case of being given a velocity, and uh, we need to get the component horizontally vertical we shall be using all that and also we shall be using the Pythagoras theorem so you're welcome um projectile motion what is it all about let's begin by watching this video the video is about a body which has been projected and by projection I mean throwing so um when you throw a stone towards that mango that you want to eat when you fire a bullet from the gun, when you fire a shell from the tank, that body which is moving in air, that stone is what you call a projectile. And the motion that it is describing is what you call projectile motion. So in that case, you can see that that body is moving both vertically, in other words, upwards, and at the same time, it's also moving horizontally. That means that whenever we talk about projectile motion, we define a projectile as a body which when given an initial velocity moves in both the vertical and horizontal directions and um, we define projectile motion as the motion of a body which when given an initial velocity moves in both the horizontal and vertical directions now after looking at what a projectile is and what projectile motion is let's dive in into what terms we use in this topic of projectile motion we use um, different terms. Among them, we have, for example, the angle of projection, trajectory, and so on. So in order to define all of this, I need us to look at um, this diagram. Um, this is for a body which has been projected at an angle theta to the horizontal. So. Uh, we define this angle of projection theta as the angle between the horizontal and uh, the initial direction of motion of the projectile. And um, so looking at this diagram that I've drawn here, uh, we can define a trajectory as the path followed by the projectile. In other words, it's just like the road where the cars move and so on. So for this case here, the trajectory is where the projectile moves or passes along its motion. And um, we can also define the range, the total distance from the initial point of projection to where the body lands on the same horizontal, horizontal plane. So this is the horizontal plane that I'm talking about. So in other words, you define it with respect to the horizontal plane. From the point of projection, where the body lands on the same horizontal plane. On the other hand, the time of flight also is the time taken to move from the point of projection to where the projectile lands on the same horizontal plane. That is the time of flight. And um, after looking at that as well, we can also look at another term, and that is the maximum height. We can define the maximum height as... Um, the distance or the vertical distance between the horizontal and the maximum point attained by the projectile. That is the maximum height. 
So after having looked at all those terms there, let's now move to some of the equations that we use in vertical, I mean in projectile motion. And still, I'll always refer to this video here uh, about projectile motion. Now, to begin with, uh, the body has been given an initial velocity, which I'll call the velocity U. This velocity is at an angle theta to the horizontal. And um, as a result, <coughs> this is my velocity U, is having the horizontal component which I will call ux and the vertical component which I will call uy. Those are the initial, that is the initial velocity u in terms of, um, and its components horizontal and then vertically. So, <clears throat> when that body has been released, it will be moving as shown there and the components of the velocities keep on changing. For example, if it is there, so <clears throat> when the body reaches at that point there, since it has covered some distances and um, of course it has taken some time, we talk now about the final velocity. So at this point here, the final velocity is V and is having components in the vertical direction that is Vy and the horizontal component which is Vx. So that is velocity at that point there. Likewise, in case I release this body to move <coughs> further, like um, when it reaches there, this velocity, will still, I mean this velocity at this point now will be having a magnitude pointing in that direction. That is the velocity v. After this time here, after that time. And it will be having the horizontal component, which is Vx. And the, the direction of the component vertically will be pointing downwards, which is now Vy. So in this, I need you to note that um, the velocity, the component of the velocity horizontal doesn't change. It is moving in the horizontal direction uh, to the right. And the component of the velocity vertically keeps on changing. At one point is moving upwards, at one point is moving downwards. And for that case, therefore, I need to note that the acceleration will be a g. It will be either positive or negative. At the same time, that is for the vertical motion. <clears throat> at the same time, for the horizontal motion, since acceleration that we'll be considering is that due to gravity, and it is always vertical. Its component in the horizontal direction is always equal to zero. So that is what I needed to note as well. <clears throat> so coming back to our lesson, when we talk about the equation that we shall be using, and um, of course in the derivations of some of the equations, and in the calculation we shall always be referring to the equations of linear motion. So. We're going to be looking at the equation of velocity at any time t. So beginning from the first equation of motion and um, taking into consideration that anything which will be horizontal, I'll be using letter x. And anything which is vertical, I'll be using the letter uh, y. So knowing that... <coughs> From our first equation of motion, therefore, horizontally, the final velocity at any point is given by that. And um, from what we looked at earlier on, that the initial velocity is having a component horizontally, which is um, ux, which is in terms of cosine. How does that cos come in? We can first of all look at that briefly. So considering this, the initial velocity u, and uh, <clears throat> of course it is having horizontal component, which we are calling the ux, and the vertical component which we are calling <clears throat> the uy. So this is, the initial velocity u is inclined at an angle theta, 
the horizontal. So when I try to complete the quadrilateral of forces, parallel lines or parallel vectors are the same. So here I have Uy and here I have Ux. So now from that diagram there, when I try to extract out a right angled triangle, I'll end up with um, something like this vertically u y horizontally u x have the angle theta and then the velocity u so from trigonometry we know that um, the sine of any angle for this case the angle is theta is equal to the opposite out of the hypotenuse which implies therefore that um, when I cross multiply my vertical component of the initial velocity ui is given by u sine of theta so that is for the vertical component how about for the horizontal component of velocity so for that case we shall say that from the cos of an angle being equal to the adjacent out of the hypotenuse, it implies that when I cross multiply, I'll end up with um, the horizontal component of velocity, initial velocity being equal to u cos of theta. So that is where they come from. Uh, we said that uh, from the from the first equation of motion, which is this, horizontally we have Vx is equal to x plus at. Remember that a is equal to 0. a is equal to 0, which means therefore that uh, our velocity, final velocity at any point is always given by the equation Vx is equal to u cos of theta. That is at any point. And uh, likewise, in the case of to get the distance covered the horizontal distance covered by the projectile after any given time t s is equal to ut plus a half at t squared that is the second equation of motion and in case i look at the horizontal we have s we shall replace it with uh, x and uh, where there is u we shall replace it with ux which is the horizontal component of the initial velocity and where there is a we shall put there ax but remember that the acceleration is zero that is in the horizontal direction so which means that therefore our distance covered horizontally is given as u cos of theta then times the time t that is x is equal to u cos theta times the time taken as t. That gives us the horizontal distance covered by the projectile. So after having looked at that, let's now look at the vertical components. From the first equation of motion, v is equal to u plus a t, vertically, remember I said that I'll be using the y, it implies that v y is equal to u y plus negative o plus a y times t the a y is the acceleration left and since it is going upwards we say that acceleration will be a negative g so which means that when you substitute those into our expression we shall find that um v y the final velocity at any point vertically is equal to v y is equal to u sine theta minus g times the time taken that is the expression for the velocity vertically at any time t. Likewise, from the second equation of motion, when I substitute the s with the y, meaning the vertical distance, the u with the uy, initial velocity uh, vertically, and then the ay times the negative g, I'll get the final expression as... Um, y equals to 
y is equal to u sine theta times t then minus a half gt square, which is the vertical distance covered by the projectile at any time t. And um, remember that we said that we shall be using the equations of linear motion. So after having got those, let's now get to the velocity at any point. Let me first draw this diagram, or let me use this video here. So using this diagram again for the video, um, if, the velo if the body is at this point here, its vertical velocity will be pointing upwards, and the horizontal component will be pointing to the right. And since this is a right-angled triangle, it means that the velocity at that point V is the square root of Vx squared plus Vy squared. That is coming from the Pythagoras theorem, which is c is equal to c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. That is where it is coming from. So likewise, if that body was at a point where by the vertical velocity was pointing downwards, like at this point here, the velocity v will still be got from Pythagoras theorem. This is a right angle triangle, and uh, we have our a, we have our b, and then we have our c, which implies that v will be equal to the square root of vx squared plus vy squared. Of course, the vy will be negative, but when you square it in a bracket, it will be a positive. So that is how we get the velocity at any point p, at any point. And of course, from that right angle triangle again, let me use this one here. From that right angle triangle again, we can get our angle from tan of an angle. The direction of the projectile at any point is given in terms of the, the angles. So using the tan, tan is equal to opposite divided by the adjacent, which means that the angle alpha will be equal to the tan inverse of the vertical, which is Vy, the opposite over the adjacent, which is Vx. That is at any time. So that is the direction of the projectile at any time t. And note that if the body is still moving upwards, that angle will be positive. If the body is moving downwards, that angle will be a negative. So that is where we get the equation, this one here. And our angle, I will say that is given by tan inverse of the opposite Vy over the adjacent, which is Vx. So after having looked at that, let's now turn to maximum height. Remember the projectile moves from this point and it moves upwards. At this highest point here, the final velocity is always equal to zero. In other words, the body is momentarily at rest. So if it is at rest, it means that the velocity is equal to zero. From the third equation of motion, which is uh, v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. Where you have v, we shall be putting there vy. Where you have u, we shall be putting there uy. And then we have a, we shall put, be putting there the negative, just since the body was moving upwards. So which means, therefore, that... Um, the final velocity is zero. Uy is equal to u sine theta. You square that. And then a is equal to negative g. You substitute that. And then the maximum height is given by the h. So where, where, where the s is, you put it there, the capital H. So making h subject of the formula gives us the expression for the maximum height attained. And then if you get the time taken to reach maximum height again, the time can be got from the first equation of motion. So, from that first equation of motion, still, since we know the vert, the final velocity, we have been given the initial velocity, and then we have the a, then we can get our time taken to reach maximum height. Which time taken, therefore, will be got from 
that equation after substituting in the the known values we will get our time taken to maximum height as that so with that introduction ladies and gentlemen i need to go to the class look at the notes and try to follow how to get the equation for the time of flight the range and uh, the equation of trajectory in case it is somewhat challenging then you can simply take the screenshots and look at that <clears throat> so because of time let me end with uh, two videos the first one is just to investigate projectile motion when given four bodies <clears throat> and they are to travel the same range how does it look like let's take a look so uh, in this video we have four particles or projectiles they have been given um, they have been projected at different angles 60, uh, 45, 30 and uh, 20 degrees so when you project them we see that they are going, they're going to cover uh, they, they, they have been projected with different velocities and at different angles in order to reach at the same point so <clears throat> that is for that is covering the same range then after looking at that let's also look at in case we give that when they have been projected at the same velocity so we not see that <coughs> the bodies are moving the different angles of projection are given there and we not something special here that something special is about the angle 45 we can see that out of all the four bodies the one which is projected with an angle 45 covers the longest distance horizontal distance and that is the range so which then proves to us that um, for the body to cover the or the longest distance it must be projected at an angle of 45 degrees remember that our range is given by the formula u squared sine 2 theta out of g so for the body to cover the longest range function here must be equal to 1 in other words sine of 2 theta is equal to 1 and when is sine equals to 1 it means that 2 theta is equal to sine inverse sine inverse of 1 which gives us 2 theta equals to 90 degrees and dividing that gives us theta being equal to 45 so 45 is the angle at which when the body is projected it always covers the longest horizontal distance and that's where we're going to stop right now when we meet again we'll be looking at some of the numerical examples otherwise Thank you for watching. See you again.